ever since I found out the director of these films is a fan of the AVGN, I always kind of wondered, this scene... <laughs> I kind of wondered. Kong can't stop this on his own. He won't be alone. King Kong and Godzilla return to the real Middle Earth and Godzilla crosses Kong? X Kong? This number two. As usual, before I give my thoughts on this film, I should probably give my thoughts on the other Godzilla and Kong films. Not all the way back to the original Godzilla and King Kong films, but let's uh, go over the newest monster titans movies that are being made, starting with this one. That one I found to be a little underwhelming. It did have the goods near the end, but I thought the human characters were very boring, and the ones that were interesting, they killed off too early, so I thought that was a little dull. Call Kong Island, I thought was a pretty fun time. There wasn't anything too deep to it, but I thought it was pretty enjoyable. I like the characters in there and Kong was pretty cool. The second Godzilla film was entertaining enough. Again, the people weren't anything that great, but they were serviceable. And then Godzilla vs. Kong, I really had a good time with. I thought they did a really good job creating this world where they could both exist and interact off each other and the people. Again, worked well enough. They pushed the story forward, but they kept it a King Kong story. Godzilla was in it the right amount of time, but it was still mainly focused on Kong, and I think it makes sense to kind of make him the main character, so I thought that all balanced out very well. So now we have them, instead of fighting each other, teaming up. Well, for the most part, they fight each other a little bit. Don't worry, there's, there's a little bit of that in there. But they are teaming up against a new enemy, and the enemy is is pretty cool and the fights are pretty cool. Honestly, just on a surface level, this film delivers what it's promising. It has a lot of monsters fighting each other in a cool way, in cool locations. It's introducing other monsters into the mix and they're a lot of fun to see. It's growing this world a lot more of uh, Hollow Earth, which is really fun to explore and it's really cool seeing all the neat creatures in there. On that level, it definitely works. If you want anything more than that, which I'm not sure if you do, you're not gonna get that much more. This film feels like there's maybe 10 minutes chopped out of it, which is better than a film that, say, was supposed to be two and a half hours long and was trimmed down to an hour and a half, it's nothing like that. But it does kind of add up after a while. And again, I don't know anything about the behind the scenes of the making of this film, but everything feels like the scenes have seconds trimmed off either at the end of them or at the beginning of them. When you take out those little sections that could have made a big difference if you left them in, it does come out a touch empty. I was entertained, I had a good time, I'm glad I saw it on IMAX. This is definitely a good IMAX movie. Seeing Hollow Earth, you know, on that big screen is really, really cool and these fights are really cool. But by the time it got to the end and the end credits ran, I swear the audience went, oh, okay. Like, it ended so quickly. There's no epilogue, or maybe there's like five seconds of epilogue, and everyone was kind of shocked it was over already. And that's not surprising when you really look at the way the film is paced. It's not that the pacing is bad, it's that there's really no sense of letting people kind of sit in the awe of a moment. That is, except when only the monsters are on screen. This movie does very good at visual storytelling. I feel like the previous film did as well. Getting across what the monsters are feeling and why they're feeling that way, what they're thinking in a moment, what they're working towards. The titans were the guardians of nature and the great apes became the protectors of humanity. Oh my god, I knew he was a part of this universe! Oh, great apes. Never mind. Even the addition of a Diddy Kong in this, which I was not excited to see. In fact, I was kind of dreading that. I don't like when they throw kids in a franchise. It just feels gimmicky. It actually worked out pretty well. This has very much a feel of God of War. Like, a lot of times I want to see Kong saying, We do what we please, boy. And because of that, the relationship between the two isn't as straightforward as you would think. As soon as you see this kid, you think they're immediately gonna get along and it's gonna be really cute and adorable, and it's not. It really sticks to that animalistic, savage nature that this world would have. They did so many things I thought I wouldn't enjoy, but I really got into. Like, they make Kong older in this. It's almost like an old man Logan story meets 
Monkey Moses? Like he has to go save his people in this from an evil villain? And it sounds ridiculous, but because they're letting the visual storytelling kind of just speak for itself, it's pretty cool. And you want to see this villain get his comeuppance. With that said, you could almost call this King Kong with special appearance by Godzilla at the end. He does do some things, but it's mainly like while King Kong is having his own movie, Godzilla is grinding away and leveling up for what's later in the game. So the title might be a touch misleading, because again, they're really making it look like they're gonna have a lot of King Kong and Godzilla together, and they really don't until the very end. I thought the first film was better at balancing that out, where again, King Kong was the main character. He was definitely the main focus, and I think that makes sense, but Godzilla had a fight in the middle of it, and then he had a fight at the end, that makes sense. Here, they don't see each other until the very end, and they make it count. It's cool, it's a great fight, and it's great what they do, but you really feel like for a film called Godzilla X-Men Kong, I don't know why they have this title, there would be more of Godzilla and Kong in there together. That's not just a signal. That's a call for war. No, it's a call for we need more fish. Obviously, you don't show up to a Godzilla or King Kong movie for the people, unless it's Godzilla minus one. <laughs> and this film is no exception. The people are not great in this, but they're... Not awful, they're all acted well. It's kind of like when you have a bee buzzing around you and it doesn't sting you, but you kind of swat it away and go, oh man, what a pest, but I guess we need them. That's what the people are like in this. At their worst, they're a touch annoying, and at their best, they're passable. The only character I really got invested in this was the uh, kid. I really felt like her connection to the monsters and to Hollow Earth made sense. It, you understand why she's in this story. Everyone else, I feel like you could have gotten rid of. If I was to rework this story somehow, I would have it where the kid and uh, team have to go down to Hollow Earth and they have to figure out what's causing this disturbance and everything. And then the entire team is wiped out except for the kid. And the kid discovers the tribe that she's from and they then form this big connection. And maybe if you want, you can have the mother survive and she's trying to make her way to the kid. Something like that. Keep it simple. But instead they have this not very funny comic relief, which we've seen funny in other stuff. We have Dan Stevens playing a Titan dentist, which is a funny idea, but they don't really get that far with it. With that said, there's not a ton of other people in it, but the people that are in it are just there to explain exposition. There is literally a submarine that follows Godzilla, and their only purpose in the entire movie, the entire crew, is just to say what Godzilla is doing. They don't do anything else. They only point and say, what's Godzilla doing? Oh, well, he's doing this now. <laughs> and again, as these movies go, that's not a huge issue. It's very rare that that's a deal breaker. But there are moments where the humans could have worked, but I feel like the editing down of certain scenes and then expanding other ones to have too much exposition might have gotten in the way too much. For example, there's a scene where the kid returns to Hollow Earth and the door opens up and you see her face just for a second she has this nice little smile like man she's home she doesn't belong you know in, in the above world with the rest of us she really feels out of place and this door opens and she has this nice little smile it's a good moment but it's only a few seconds i'm thinking to myself man if they really drew that out i mean just to like a good 30 to 40 seconds of her just really taking in this place that could have been really cool but instead you have to cut to the comic relief both trying to get laughs and also trying to explain everything that's going on and this is a movie i swear to god was not meant to have so much dialogue i think this was an afterthought i think that the script was written it was mainly quiet and then producers or somebody looked at and said no 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 you have to have people explain stuff more oh, why is the gravity suddenly go away here and that comes back no 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 you, you have to really really explain that when in Godzilla and Kong you don't really need that much explanation if you just have something in the middle of the earth glowing and these two rocks touch together and people start rising up that's it we can put the pieces together but instead you have to have these people come out and explain all this science mumbo jumbo that I Get the feeling if you really analyze, still won't make sense. Get over here! 
the film really is its best when it's not talking, and that includes the one likable human character, the girl. I think she's very expressive and she has to, you know, use sign language, but her facial expressions are very, very good. Her interaction with the monsters is very good, and what place she's going to have in helping the monsters out and defeating the monsters works in a way that would work in these movies. It gets weird, it gets goofy, it gets fun, and it also feels very large and epic, and all of that is great. But there's so many moments where I'm getting into it and then I'll just hear Rebecca Hall start to over explain something and I'm like, I don't need that. Just let the scene play as is. But like I said, it doesn't ruin the movie. The movie does come through on what it's promising. It's giving you some cool monsters that have cool personalities. Godzilla, while not in it much, still has a ton of personality. Like I said, I love this new villain that they introduce, and he has this lizard that he rides around that you really feel the cold off of. I mean, all of that is great, and I feel like that's why people are going to see this movie. I do feel like this could have been like a great Godzilla vs. Kong movie, but as is, it's a decent one. It's good enough. So with that said, let's give it three out of four no end credit sequences. Yeah, don't wait till the end. This movie is really like going to a restroom stall. It does its business and then you leave, but it felt pretty good while doing it. Hey, isn't that a great analogy? With that said, what are your thoughts? Did you really love this movie? Did you think it was even better than the last Godzilla vs. Kong movie? Did you feel like it was the best out of all these Titan movies that have come out recently? Or do you feel like it was terrible and the humans just ruined everything? They talked too much and they didn't even get the monsters down that great? Or are you somewhere in between where you think, yeah, you know, the humans, you know, sometimes could get annoying, but the monsters were pretty damn cool and that's why I came to see it. Let me know your thoughts and I'll see you next time. Take care.